All right, Unruly fans, welcome back. Back again. To another deep dive into a Mug Club Tuesday. Yeah. I gotta say, after that two-parter last week for the brewery's 10th anniversary. Huge. I wasn't sure if we'd be able to... Top it. Yeah, top it. The energy was high. It was amazing. Well, but I think... We got some good stuff this week. The Unruly crew always brings it. You know, always brings it. Keeps it exciting. Yeah. And, you know, there's still some, like, lingering celebratory sure. energy. Especially those porters. Oh, my gosh. Those porters were so good. I mean, the patched in is a classic. It is a classic. We love that one. But those peanut butter and caramel porters were... Oh, decadent. Amazing. Decadent is the word. All right. So back to our regularly scheduled program. Regularly scheduled programming. It's Mug Club Tuesday. Yes. You know what that means? 20 ounce. Those 20 ounce mugs. The beautiful chalice. Are flowing. Yes. We have a slightly smaller crew tonight. Yeah. Where is everybody? Some of our regulars are a little under the weather. Oh, no. We're sending them good vibes, you know. It better soon. But that doesn't mean that the you games know, must go on. are any less exciting or competitive. The competition was fierce. Oh, yes. Yeah. So let's introduce our players. Yes. So we have. Here we got. We've got Ben. Our game night vigilante. Dude, vigilante. Which, if you're new to the deep dive, that means he is laser focused. Laser focused. On winning. Really on the game. No distractions. No distractions. Then we have Eric. Yes. The reigning inner game night ninja. Ah, the ninja. Known for his, you know. Stealth. Stealth strategy. And cunning. Yeah. And then we have Jeff. Yes. Who has been after that ninja title. Yeah, he wants it. For weeks. Wants to usurp him. Yes. And then, of course, we have Dan. Yes. The underdog. Our underdog. Coming to prove everyone wrong. Yes. Always ready to, you know, come from behind and take the win. Absolutely. And we have a guest this week. Oh, yes. We have Corey. Welcome, Corey. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Glad to have you. For this unruly madness. Unruly madness. Yes. So. So what are we playing tonight? Five player settlers of Catan. Ooh. That's a recipe for disaster. Oh, yeah. That is a lot of tension. So much. So much tension. So tell me what happened. Well, early on, it was really neck and neck. Okay. Between Corey, actually. Our guest. Our guest, Corey, and Ben the Vigilante. Wow. Both of them got some really prime real estate. Okay. Really good numbers. They were strategizing their trades really well. Nice. Um, But Ben being the Vigilante, yeah. he's playing it smart. He really focused on resource production. Okay. Cornering the market on brick and lumber. Oh, very important. So important. And Corey tried to counter with a sheep-based strategy, okay. which we've seen before. It can be effective. Can be very effective. Yeah. But Ben saw it coming. Mm. Remember that sheep trade? With Dan. With Dan. Yeah. It was genius. He completely shut down Corey's entire game plan. Wow. That's... That's why he's the vigilante. That's why he's the vigilante. Always two steps ahead. Always thinking ahead. Have you ever pulled off like a big game-changing trade like that in Settlers? Oh, absolutely. I feel like it's so risky. It is risky. But when it works. But when it works, oh, it is so satisfying. So satisfying. It's about knowing the other players anticipating their needs. Right. And striking at just the right moment. Wow. But speaking of unpredictable moments. Oh, here we go. Remember our theory? About? About unruly brewing. Being on a dice-rolling vortex. At a dice-rolling vortex, yes. All those crazy rolls that we've seen over the past 10 episodes. I mean, it's been wild. It's unbelievable. Like, statistically improbable. Right, and we've even thought, like, oh, maybe it's the floors, you know. The uneven floors. They're so charming. They are charming. But a little uneven. But a little uneven. Maybe that's what's throwing off the dice. But it is. they rearranged the tables this week. But they did. And guess what? What? Not a single no. freakish roll. I know. I was shocked. I was watching. I was wait. I was like, where is it? I know. Where's that crazy roll? I know. It didn't happen. What does it mean? I don't know. Is the vortex theory debunked? Is it just a statistical anomaly? Maybe we need to bring in like a statistician or something. To figure this out. To really analyze this. But that's not all. Uh, that was new this week. What else? So there was another big development. Okay. Remember how we were all wondering if these two beloved... Unruly traditions. Music bingo and game night. Yes. Could coexist. I was a little skeptical. Me too. I thought it was going to be chaos. I picture like people running around. I know. Just utter chaos. And not being able to focus. Yeah. But it worked. It, did, it somehow worked. Somehow it worked. Everyone was seamlessly switching between, you know, game turns and bingo rounds. It was amazing. It was like strategy happening over here. Yeah. And then like frantic dauber action happening over there. 
And get this. Corey, our guest, yes. won two bingos in a row. No way. While dominating settlers of Catan. What a multitasker. I know. <laughs> Talk about a champion. That's impressive. I know $15 in winnings. Wow. That's amazing. So is this the future of Unruly? I don't know, but I'm intrigued. This fusion of board games and bingo. It was truly a sight to behold. It was amazing. So folks, if you ever find yourselves in the area on a Tuesday, you know where to be. You know where to be. It's doggone Tuesdays. So bring your furry friends. Yes. Grab a delicious brew. My brew. And experience this unique blend of games and music for yourself. You will not regret it. You will not regret it. And to send you off on that unreally high, we've got a song that perfectly captures the energy of the night. Oh, I love this one. It's called Sailing Through Game Night. Ooh, yes. Until next week, keep on gaming. Keep on gaming. <laughs>